Yeah, I, I do want to ask you guys this because you're both point guards and, and we talk a lot about the the importance of having a good point guard on the floor, not just because of what he could do with a basketball in his hands, but that leadership, coach, extension of the coach, all that kind of stuff. I do think that watching someone like a Katie Johnson who kind of runs the show for Auburn, who embodies what this Auburn team is um, versus – Javon Quinterly, who is super talented, but kind of can give off this like too school, too cool for school kind of a vibe. And I think you see that with who Alabama is in getting these big wins, but also doing things like losing to Georgia or losing to um, to Missouri or losing to Iona. So, Sean, how 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 important is that for those point guards in those roles to be able to kind of provide more than just, uh, you know, the leadership, create, get an assist here, run a pick and roll there? Very important. Rob, I, I had a point guard for two years. Wish I had him for four. TJ McConnell, who, you know, is the envy of a lot of NBA coaches and teams. You know, he's in his seventh year playing for the Pacers. And um, I, I think back to how he helped every day while he was at Arizona. He didn't just help during the game. He helped prepare the team for the game. He was great in between games, in practice. He was great in the summer. And it, a lot of it was the intangibles that you had mentioned. It's no different than the quarterback on a college football team. It's not how he just performs on game day, but who he is every day. Because, you know, you think about it in basketball, Rob, it's, one, it's the only sport you play both, offense and defense, as a team. When you're on defense, who does everybody see first? So like the other four guys, who do they watch? Who's the tone setter, the, the head of the snake, their point guard? Well, when that same group is on offense and they're down the other end and the ball starts coming across half court, who are they looking at? The point guard. Like you set the tone, whether you want to or not, on really everything that happens every day and everything in practice. It's, it's so important. So I use the TJ McConnell example, and this week, the Arizona UCLA game kind of fits what you just talked about. Kirk Creesa, who I think has a lot of TJ McConnell in him. He's just younger. He's at the very beginning, but he has no problem like KD Johnson showing emotion, right? Being the heart and soul, diving on the floor, taking charges. And when he's confident and playing well, I think he takes Arizona to another level on UCLA side, Tiger Campbell, He's that, you know, wily veteran that's been in the final four, that's been through college basketball seasons, and he has maybe a different demeanor, but man, his toughness and when Tiger Campbell is locked in and playing well, doing it on both ends, I, I feel like that's when UCLA is at their best. So when you think about that game, how important that matchup is, and, and that's really college basketball. Rob, it's why we just talked about earlier in the show, the advantage of two of those guys. Right. So now if you have that one, two punch, two point guards on the floor that can do it like Kentucky. I mean, think about what that does for their team, not just in games, but every day. And, and you know uh, so it's important. You know, Rob, it's interesting you say that because Purdue doesn't have a point guard per se, but they have Jaden Ivey who does it for them. Um, he's unique in that way that he sets the tone for Purdue's team. So I think they can get away with it, but they don't have great point guard play in terms of setting the tone. But that's why Villanova has a chance to be great here down the stretch. Gillespie is not more experienced guy, tougher guy than him. James Akinjo doesn't back down from anybody um, at, at Baylor. And then I think what Wheeler's done for Kentucky on both ends of the floor has given them that attitude as well. So I think you're starting to see some of these teams actually separate here in the next couple of weeks because of that one position. Yeah. You mentioned Colin Gillespie, Arch. Yeah. I mean, again, Rob, remember when he got hurt a year ago and how, mm -hmm. how it felt watching Villanova and just the meaning that he brings to their team on offense and defense and every day. Villanova is one of those other teams that we can put in that category when they won it all, that they had more than one point guard. You know, Jalen Brunson, who's – Again, the gold standard of being a winning point guard, especially in college. I mean, uh, think about the meaning he brings to their team, his demeanor, his leadership on offense and on, and on defense. But I don't think there's anything more important 
towards a team success, but especially we talk a lot on this podcast about teams that can win it all or teams that can go deep into the NCAA tournament in March. I think the prerequisite is you have to have a point guard who has all of those intangibles and maybe two of them helps your cause even more. The, the one last thing I want to circle back on, because we've kind of talked about this two point guard theme so far this year is, uh, or so far the show is Auburn. They have two point guards. They start Katie Johnson and Zeb Jasper. Wendell Green plays a lot of the, the minutes at the point guard spot. Uh, they have the three point shooting. They have the defense. They have Walker Kessler in the paint and they have a guy that arch. Look, we, we, we're going to crush you for, for Alabama. Uh, we got to give you credit. You were the first guy that said Jabari Smith he did. was going to be the number one pick. Yeah, you, he you did. Let's give that. him credit for that. He won't deny that. Yeah, he'll take that. <laughs> he'll take that one. He's not going to ask for I'll us to rewind the tape. On, on hey, that. I'll take my pat on the back. <laughs> he won't deny that one. <laughs> uh, so, I, I mean, look, I think that you guys probably like Ken Palm as much as I like Ken Palm. Auburn's sixth right now. That feels like it's a little bit low for what this team is and what this roster is. On Ken yeah. Palm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're 12, they're, Rob, they're 12 on offense and 10 on defense. Um, one thing defensively that really hurts them is they foul too much. And part of it is their, their style, the amount of guys they play. Um, it's, it's probably something that maybe they don't care as much about, but fouling kind of hurts efficiency uh, when it gets to that. And, you know, they don't get to the line a ton, but, you know, they're really not a great percentage three-point shooting team. You know, they're in the 200s when it comes yes. to percentage shooting from three. So if you, if you would say, why are they not like one across the board? They have a couple stats that a couple of these other teams maybe don't have, but what they get out of blocking shots is, is incredible what they're doing in terms of protecting the rim and the shot blocking ability that their defense has is a game changer. It really is. I mean, I think it, it trumps the fouling. It trumps, whatever else you're going to say, you know, they're not a great defensive rebounding team. So what they're blocking so many shots at the basket. It's becoming really, really hard for anybody over the course of 40 minutes to beat them. You can't get anything easy at the rim. And number one, number one in America in blocks. And they got two of them too. They actually had three and their length at the wing is good, but what Walker Kessler may be, um, I would say he's the national defensive player of the year. I don't think that you can put a price tag on him of the value of what he's done for Auburn's team this year compared to where they were a year ago, bringing in all these young guys. Walker Kessler is the defensive player of the year nationally. He's definitely the SEC defensive player of the year. And what he's done for their team defensively um, and how he's changed things around the basket for Auburn is, is one of the reasons right now they have to be the number one overall seed. But to answer your question, Rob, it's real simple. The only thing that Auburn doesn't do well that really hurts them, I mean, because we're talking about there's only five spots ahead right now of where they are nationally. I mean, they are sixth, is that they do foul a lot. And as we know, you know, sometimes if you do foul, it can change the game. And especially as they play against teams that are as talented as they are. And by the way, there's not many of those uh, walking around this country. No. Hey, there's very few teams that can get away with their fouling rate, but their depth, they actually can get away with it, which is, is crazy. I mean, uh, that they have the bodies that they have to be able to absorb that kind of foul trouble. But um, Auburn, Auburn's got the – I mean, I guess the question is, can Auburn run the table here down the back half in conference? You know, they got back-to-back -back road games at Georgia and Arkansas – Arkansas in particular will be a crazy environment. Then they get Texas A&M and Vandy at home. They're at Florida, Mississippi at home, Tennessee on the road for Coach Pearl. I'm sure that one will be live. But yeah, like that's what I was going to say. If they're going to, if they're going to trip up, Knoxville be... will absolutely be crazy. But somebody's yes. going to have to knock them off at some point for Kentucky, or um, I guess Kentucky right now is the team that can try and contend to win the. The deal, but they don't play Kentucky again. Kentucky's two games back, and Auburn's think, nine and zero. So think about how much college basketball has changed. And we talked about who Kentucky added. How about how about who Auburn added? Yeah, you got KD Johnson and Walker Kessler that that transfer one from your league, the SEC, and both don't sit out. They're eligible right away, 
and you plug them in, one of them now makes you the number one shot blocking team in college basketball. And KD Johnson, Rob, to your point, I mean, you talk about the motor that makes them go, the emotional guy, a guy can just score it, handle the ball, and uh, kind of yeah, gives yeah, them that you know special ingredient. You know what's amazing about that, Sean? The two guys that make it work for the teams that are winning the SEC this year are Severe Wheeler and Katie Johnson, who are both Georgia transfers.